Syrian Arab Army continues operations against armed terrorist groups. And Syrians in Sydney march in support of Syria and its national army. And more Israeli settlements in the West Bank. in English from the Syrian Arab Television in Damascus. In a statement exposing Washington's role in sabotaging the peaceful solution in Syria, General Martin Dempsey, chairman of the Joint American Staff, admitted he is in favor of the idea of arming terrorist groups in Syria. He claimed that this would accelerate ending the crisis. However, his claim of defending Syria is a big lie. He ignored the reports exposing America's destructive role in supporting and arming the terrorists who murder Syrian citizens and sabotage institutions and public and private properties. In a related context, the Russian permanent representative to the UN, Vitaly Churkin, asserted that America's claim not to be involved in arming the opposition in Syria would not absolve it of responsibility for the acts of the armed opposition there. He asserted that the U.S. had immense influence on countries like Qatar, which is the main source of supplying weapons to opposition. Mr. Chorkin added that Washington could use its influence and put pressure on those who give arms to the Syrian opposition. The jihadi bloc in Jordan admitted that six of its members were killed in clashes with the Syrian Ar Arab army and several Syrian governorates. Those who were killed belonged to the so-called Al-Nusra Front and were killed during the past few days in Damascus, Dar'a, Aleppo, Hama and Idlib. Several other Jordanian terrorists were also killed in the clashes. This Salafi bloc in Jordan admitted that it had 300 armed terrorists fighting against the Syrian army in Syria. In Damascus countryside, units of the Syrian Arab army carried out a series of operations against the terrorists in the farms of Al-Ub in Duma and in al Atebe, Samalka and Arbin, destroying a number of the terrorist vehicles and machine guns. In Al-Ub farms, many terrorists were killed and five of their vehicles were completely destroyed, in addition to two vehicles equipped with heavy machine guns. While in al Atebe, a unit of the Syrian Arab army killed many terrorists, including the leader of the so-called Al-Ubada Brigade, of Al Nusra Front and he holds the Iraqi nationality. The operation also resulted in destroying a vehicle equipped with an anti aircraft machine gun and a number of the terrorists' cars. In Arbin and Zamalka, units of the army carried out two successful operations, destroying a hideout in which many weapons, heavy machine guns, and mortar shells were found. In Hama countryside, units of the Syrian armed forces restored security and stability to the village of Al Hamamiyat after clashes with the so called Al Nusra Front. Units of the Syrian Arab army also confiscated rockets from the terrorists in addition to RBGs and automatic rifles. Engineering units diffused several explosive devices planted by the terrorists along the highway leading to the village and within the village itself. In Idlib's countryside and in Binish town, the Syrian Arab army units destroyed in a qualitative operation four cars equipped with machine guns and a number of the terrorists' hideouts, killing or wounding the terrorists inside it. Moving to Damascus countryside, where units of the Syrian armed forces continued their operations of chasing the remaining terrorists out of Daraya town. Military units found tunnels used by the terrorists to store arms and ammunition. During their chase of the terrorists around the square of Shrede, units of the Syrian army discovered two tunnels between the square and the railway station. They also destroyed vehicles used by the terrorists to install roadblocks. In solidarity stand with the motherland Syria and the Syrian Arab army, the Syrian and Arab expatriates in Australia and Sydney City, organized a popular rally. 
in denunciation against the fierce attacks Syria is exposed to and the crimes carried out by the armed terrorist groups. The rally came as a response for the calls from the group Leave Syria Alone. The participants in, in it stressed their solidarity with Syria, expressing their support to the, to the political program to solve the crisis. The participants expressed their hope that Syria will overcome this crisis and restore its strength and stability. Israeli Ministry of War approved the construction of 19 new settlement units to expand the settlement of Beit Il near Ramallah in the West Bank. The Israeli government of occupation announced yesterday a new expansion plan to construct an additional 346 settlement units going further in its expansion policies to cut off more Palestinian lands. In Egypt, young men of the National Rescue Front announced they will hold four marches today heading to at tahrir Square as part of preparations for demonstrations announced by several opposition parties. Meanwhile, a sit-in was held in by dozens of Egyptian political activists and friends of the member of the popular movement, Mohammed Ajundi, who died of wounds he sustained as a result of being tortured after he was kidnapped from at tahrir Square a few days ago. Protesters held pictures of Mohammed Jundi and placards that read No to Torture and A Country Without Torture. The participants set off into the Higher Judiciary House, chanting slogans condemning the Muslim Brotherhood, use of religion to mislead the people. Iranian Foreign Minister Ali Akbar Salehi asserted that his country adheres to its firm stances that are based on the principle of holding negotiations to resolve international problems stressing that the United States has to show good faith and to stop announcing contradictory statements so that Iran would start negotiations with it. Within the same context, the spokesperson of Iran's foreign ministry, Rahman Mahmoud Brest, said that the U.S. proposal to start negotiations with Iran does not offer anything new for Tehran, as long as Washington does not take a positive step in this direction. Libyan authorities will spread points of inspection in various parts of the capital Tripoli and its environs after the security situation there deteriorated some more. Next Friday is expected to witness a large popular opposition movement calling for rectifying the course and dissolving the general national conference of the parliament and the election of a new parliament. These measures came amidst the continuation of murder, kidnapping and plunder crimes and the widespread of armed militias there. That was it. For more news, you can visit our website www.serialonline.sy. After the break, more details on the new auto.